that costs how much? Hi guys, my name is Becky and welcome back to a series we have called That Costs How Much? As the title suggests, this is a series where we look at products that literally make ourselves ask, that cost how much? And figure out if we could essentially DIY them for a lesser price. So I am particularly excited by today's episode because we have some very cool pieces. These have all been submitted by you guys, so thank you so much. I think we should just dive into it, starting with this photo. This is the Bookworm Bookshelf by Cartel, and you guys have sent us this so many times, and I get it. This is a very, very, very cool piece. This, depending on the length that you buy, can cost anywhere from $800 to $2,400. That's a lot for, I mean, a very cool bookshelf, but that's a lot of money. So I'm gonna see if we can DIY ourselves something similar for a little bit less. So the concept behind this bookshelf is that it's like a long piece of material that's very bendable and you can make it into any shape and put your books on either side of the curve, really, which does make it a very cool piece. Now normally it wouldn't be the most important thing to figure out where your bookshelf is gonna go before you start making one, but in this case, since this piece is so large, it's gonna take up so much space, I wanna figure out exactly where it's going before we start building, so let's head on over. Okay, I'm gonna use a combination of yarn and tape to mark out the shape that I kinda wanna aim for. I think this is a good plan because once I'm happy with the curvy shape, I can take the yarn off and then see exactly how long my wavy shape is. I'm hoping the MDF will make that curve. I think it will. <laughs> That's not too extreme. <laughs> this is looking really good. I just had one thought right now though because my next step would be taking this yarn off so I can measure it. But since I've got the shape on there so well, I think I should trace it with a pencil so that I remember what I was trying to do when we go to hang the actual piece. So it looks like I'm gonna need about 15 feet long of a bendable material to create this bookshelf. My hope here is that 1 8 inch MDF board is gonna be flexible enough to make these curves. So I'm gonna head over to the hardware store and have them cut just some long strips out of a four by eight sheet for me. Station, we go. <laughs> now you always have the fun task of trying to hunt down someone who actually can operate it for you. Hello, hello. So I need this cut um, seven inches down three times. So on top of the 1 8 inch strips of MDF that I had cut, I also picked up this single piece of one by six by eight foot long pine wood. I'm going to be cutting this down into seven inch tall pieces and I think I'll need about 11 of them for the size of shelf that I'm making. These pieces of wood are gonna act as the various bookends that also help form the curve shape. And once they were all cut, I gave them a quick little sand. So I have all my pieces here, they're gonna sit against the wall like this, but to get them into the wall, we need to get screws in here somehow. So one option you have is to just buy ridiculously long screws, but the better option, I think, is to take a drill bit that's the same size as the head of your screw and drill most of the way through your blocks. So the screw can go in and then come out the end. I'm gonna do that twice for each piece. So my stack of bookends have all been prepared and then I have here my two big slices of MDF, which like it's got some good wave, right? I'm feeling okay about this. And the next step is to give them all a coat of primer. MDF is notorious for soaking up paint and making you do a ton of coats of paint. So while the primer is an extra expense, it's about $19.27 for a can, I think it's gonna save me a lot of time in hours if I do this first on all my pieces. All right, so I've got all my 11 pieces with the holes through them and my two long strips of MDF all painted the same color that I want my shelf to be. 
Now we're on to assembling it. Essentially, I'm gonna be screwing these to these before I put them together on the wall. But before we do this, it's important that we go back to the shape that we drew on the wall and have a look at where we think the books are going to land on this shelf. You can use some tape and mark where you'd like your books to sit. From here, you should notice that some of the books will sit on the top side of the line and some will sit on the underside of the line. Make note of which shelves go in what direction because we'll need to know this next. Now it's time to actually join these pieces together. Make sure you remember which way your shelves had to go. For example, here I had to place two shelves on one side and two shelves on the other side. For the spacing of my bookends, I'm starting at one end of my long strip and making a mark every 18 inches down. This will leave me with about five and a bit inches of kind of overhang at the end and that's fine. To actually attach them, make sure that the two holes we drilled through the shelf pieces are facing outward. Then add a little strip of glue to the bottom, two pilot holes through the base and into the bookshelf, and then two little screws to hold those in place. I made my track a little bit deeper than the actual book ends themselves, so it's also important to remember that the book end is sitting at the very back of the shelf because we want it to touch the wall when we go to install it. When I move on to my second strip, it's important that I start measuring from the opposite side that I did the first one because we're gonna have to attach them together after this. So once I have all the bookshelves onto both tracks, facing in the right directions, it's time to join these together to make one mega long shelf. I'm placing the two ends that have the longest overhang together, overlapping those by a little bit so that the bookshelf can sit on top, and then screwing through both pieces of MDF and into the bookshelf. Even though it's not gonna be the most perfect, flush, seamless, straight line, you will see a little bit of overlap. I think this is the best chance I have for keeping this together. All right, shelf is ready. And now we are on to the most exciting part, which is getting this up on the wall. Now, I think once we get started, it will be easy. Okay. Okay, ready? I think it's working. Not all plans go to plan sometimes. I think what happened here is that the curves we were trying to achieve were just too curvy for our 1 8 inch MDF. And I wish we caught this on camera because it was quite funny. Rochelle was like, what is that noise? <laughs> it's, it's like a tiny little crackling noise. And then this curve just said no and totally busted. And then as we were trying to do a curve down that side, that one went too. We're going to have to rethink this whole thing. I'm not giving up yet on the bookworm bookshelf. I think we can still figure it out. Let's head back to the hardware store. <laughs> So Rochelle and I put some serious thought into all the ways that we could make this even better. And I think we have a solid new game plan. Back at the hardware store, we picked up this material, which is called Flexiform. You might remember this from when I built my own pedestal dining table. I used this material because it's extremely bendy and I could make a perfect cylinder with it. Now, the reason that I didn't use this initially, even though it might seem like the obvious choice, is because a piece of four by eight Flexiform is $80 a sheet, which is a little more expensive than the MDF. But I think this is our next best choice to make this project actually happen, so we're going with this. Then it was simply bringing it back to the studio and doing basically the same thing that we had done for the first attempt. Now, as we were redoing this, we came up with a few adjustments that I think are actually gonna make the final result even better. Starting off with the creation of a half lap joint, which Rochelle is taking on. What this will do is make the connection of both long pieces virtually seamless. We're also opting to use pocket holes through the sides of each bookend. The benefits are you're going to need smaller screws, it will attach to the wall easier, and best of all, you won't see the holes in the front, which is something that I was originally going to have to cover. 
shelf has been fully reassembled. Let's take it back to the wall and cross every single finger that we have. I just really wanted to make sure that this worked before going through all the time to repaint it. Thankfully it did and it's looking so beautiful. So I still do need to paint it. I'm gonna paint it on the wall. If you were gonna do this, I would paint it on the floor before you install it. But now that it's on the wall, I am not risking taking it down. We're going to paint it on the wall. While Rochelle does that, I'm gonna hunt down every single colorful book that we have in the studio so we can style this shelf. All right, are you ready to see this? Let's talk about costs. So as a reminder, the original Cartel Bookworm bookshelf costs anywhere between $800 and $2,400, depending on the length that you buy. Now, when I add up all the materials I use to make this, not including tools, this shelf cost me $138.93. That is an incredible discount, if you ask me. That project, I'm just, I, I can't believe we did it, we got there. It's looking so good, but I still have one more that I wanna tackle with you today, and this one is also gonna be really exciting, so don't go anywhere. We're gonna start that right now. So next up, we are taking on one of our longtime favorite friends of this series, CV2. This here is the Bruna Walnut Wood and Linen Pendant Light. It's absolutely stunning, but it is also $699. And while she's gorgeous, that's a bit too much in my opinion. <laughs> so I was very excited to take this on after a lot of you sent it to me and at first I was looking at figuring out how do we actually make this thing, right? I thought I might have to learn how to make lampshades since the shape is so specific. But then I stared at it for a little bit longer and the shape started to look real familiar. This is what I've come up with and I think it's pretty genius, okay? What if we bought three lampshades of familiar shapes in white. And we did something like this. We took one like this and we put it here. We took one like this, maybe a smaller one. We flipped her upside down and we put her here. Now is this not starting to look a lot like this? I think so too. Now something that's really important to us here at the Sora Girls is using secondhand materials when we can. Now luckily for us all, there is absolutely zero shortage of plain white lampshades at the thrift store, on Marketplace, literally probably in the trash. There's so many of them. I don't doubt that you can find the shapes you need for this project. To help you out on your journey, here are some keywords that you can use when looking. First up, you wanna type in linen drum pendant shape. That's the big round shape. The material is also linen we're looking for. And for that nice angled shape, this is called an empire lampshade. So type that one in and you should find some shapes looking like this as well. So after doing various sourcing at various different locations, I have found some lampshades. Let's do a little haul. First up, we've got this guy. This was $65 off of Facebook Marketplace. Bonus points for this one is that it actually does have the lights in it. It's hardwireable into a ceiling. Now, if you can't find one like this, do not worry at all. You can just get your lampshades and buy this simple cord kit from Ikea, which will turn it into something that lights up. Next up, we've got the angled shape that we need. This one was thrifted for $7.50. And very lastly, we have the smaller lampshade that will go on the bottom. Got this one at the thrift store for $4.99. So I think we're off to a very solid start. So I have all my shades, but I actually don't need to use them just yet. I think I'm gonna address the wood trim that's around all of them first. 
To add the wood trim, I'm using a product called Wood Veneer Edging. This was $16.46 for a roll of 50 feet. I'm cutting the strips long enough to wrap around my shades and then I'm taping them down to a drop cloth. I tried to find a wood stain that matched the original warm red tone of the CB2 pendant light. Honestly, working so well. So all of my edge strips have been stained and this color actually turned out so perfect. I'm very excited by this. So next we just need to add this to the ends of the shades. So this edge banding actually has like a pre-glued edge, which typically you would heat up with an iron and then like iron it to the surface you're putting it on. Because most of these lampshades have a curve to them, it's not a fully flat surface I'm gluing to. So I am gonna use a hot glue gun instead. You're definitely welcome to try heating these up and gluing them with the glue that's already on them. I'm just worried about it actually sticking long-term because like I said, it's not a perfectly flat surface. Lampshades have all been trimmed out and that was, like I knew it'd be easy, but that was very easy and it looks super good. Remembering that you only have to do the bottoms of the two smaller lampshades. And before someone says it, yes, I realize this lampshade is quite stained, um, but who else to save this from the landfill than the person who literally only needs to see this much of the lampshade? So now we are on to the last step, which is joining the shades together. In theory, I know how I plan to do this, but I've like obviously never done it. So we're just gonna do it together. And I think this should work. I really do. Okay. I have some wire. I don't know what gauge this is. It's pretty thin, pretty bendy, pretty strong. And it's a, probably about like $3 for a little thing of wire, either from the craft store or the dollar store. And you shouldn't need a ton. So starting with my first two shades, I'm stacking them one on top of each other. I'm looping a piece of wire around the arms of the lower lampshade and then bringing it up to connect with the arms of the top lampshade. Then twist the wire tight to hold both shades together. I then repeated this two more times, connecting all of the arms from the lower shade with the upper shade. All right, now let's see if it worked. Now that wants to sit naturally a little lower than I want it to, so I'm gonna raise this shade up first so we can get the wires all at an even height. Yes. Okay, yes. Now we wire, again. Literally the same process, just using the next set of arms down. I was gonna do, you know, bottom shade to second shade, but mm. I could reach this one so much better, so might as well. Might as well. Ready? Ah! Oh my goodness. Wait, did it work? You have to tell me. I'm like, this is a reveal for me. And then I realized I can't see anything. Uh, it's hard to say. <laughs> Maybe we hang it off a C stand or something. True, true, true. Okay. All right. The shade has been complete. It looks so good in my opinion, but we can't really be finished until we do a little bit of quick maths. So as a reminder, the Bruna Walnut Wood and Linen Pendant Light retails on the CB2 website for $699. And when I add up all the materials I had to use to make mine, it only cost me $110.92. And I think that's pretty good. <laughs> As a reminder, if you'd like any information on all the projects today, that's all over on our blog. And if you'd like the links to shop the original items, they will be in the description. Check them out. They're obviously beautiful and I want them. <laughs> Thank you so much for checking out another That Cost How Much? If you found this format really interesting, there's a whole series, tons of episodes where we do our best to DIY dupes for other really cool pieces. I'm gonna link that playlist below for you to check out as well. Thank you so much for joining me today, guys. If you like this content, give it a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. It seriously, you might not think it, it does a lot, especially for our hearts. All right, that's all. See you next time. Bye, guys.